What's going on? Uh -oh. <laughs> Charlotte's Web, a story about some existential pig who was afraid of dying and being turned into bacon, so he teams up with a spider to impress all of the farm folks around them. Sounds pretty wild, right? <laughs> well, let me tell you about its ripoff. Spider's Web, a pig's tail. Yep, we're doing this. That pie's an enemy ship. We became distraught. By the way, Whatever you think this movie might be about, it's not. Not by a long shot. You could spend the next million years guessing, and you still won't be close. This is straight up one of the most nonsensical films I've ever seen. Worse than Trollland. Worse than Joshua. Worse than Leo. Guys, it is worse than Alibaba. And that's really saying something. You mean farting? Oh. I'll get to the story rundown here in a bit. I need to mentally prepare myself for it. But before I do, let's talk about the origin of this abomination. The guy behind the creation of this film is Michael Schlepp. 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 <laughs> oh no, it says it in his name. Help. Oh no, he needs help. I cannot watch. Okay, I'm sorry. The guy's name is Michael Schlepp. He's a producer, writer, director, and he's known for his groundbreaking contributions to media, such as Plan B, Cars Life, 1, 2, and 3, and then Piper Penguin and his fantastic flying machines. Just, uh, rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? <laughs> that was wicked cool! <laughs> so yeah, the guy's a fraud who rides the coattails of popular studios in the hopes that naive grandmas will buy Piper Penguin instead of Happy Feet. As far as a pig's tail, spider's web, or a spider's web, a pig's tail, I, honest to God, I, I don't even want to know anymore. But as far as the movie goes, he wrote and directed it. And the rest of the cast isn't too impressive. I legitimately feel bad for the voice actors. They've been working for this guy since 1998. And I can't shake the feeling that Michael has them locked up in his basement. It puts the lines into the recording or else it gets the hose again. All right, yeah, shut up. I'm not funny. Oh, Tiffany, that is called... A spider's pig, a web's tail. <laughs> a spider's man, a pigtail. Whatever the f*** this movie is called, it's also one of the lowest rated films I've ever seen. It's got a 1.4 on IMDb. That's terrible! <laughs> really? All right, so let's talk about the movie. Strap in, guys. This plot goes off the rails. So we start off at a farm with our main character, Walt. He's a pig with a bad case of lying and constantly fibbing to his mother. Why won't you tell the truth? Okay, fine. You want the truth? Mom! I almost gave my life protecting the pie! Ah! Immediately, I was confused. Like, do the animals live under the watch of the human farmers? Or do the animals take care of themselves? Cause like, she made a pie and put it in a cage in the middle of a field? <laughs> <gasps> my pie! <sighs> Walt, what happened to my pie? What? Pie. The pie I baked last night and put in the cage next to my favorite pot. How should I know? So I'm under the impression that the animals have their own autonomy. Then one day he just disappeared. The homework must have eaten Henry. <laughs> Henry, the homework did not eat Henry. The farmer did. Huh? <gasps> well, okay. I guess not. Because they just mentioned farmers. So are the animals friends with the humans then? Oh wait, who cares? Doesn't matter. We never talk about it again. There's aliens and ghosts now. The eerie form stopped. Tiffany jumped and scared him. But he ran, the pot dropped. I warned you all. So right after they hit you with that, a, a random snake just shows up out of nowhere with this collar thing around his neck. I, I thought it was like a sex thing at first, but it's actually a phone instead. Hey, maybe it's both. Oh, oh, oh. 
For some reason, Walt decides to go with the snake and travel to Hollywood so he can become a star. Your talents are wasted on these barnyard yokels. But they're my friends. Yes, yes, I love them as much as you. <laughs> yep. I also love how his mom is cool with it. Sure, son, go off with this random snake guy with a sex collar. It's no big deal. But we can't be too reckless. So maybe these two spiders and this bee should go keep an eye on Walt while he's gone. Oh, and you just gotta love the accents in this movie. Hello, Walt. Good breakfast. Mmm. How's it going, Gilbert? <sighs> Not well. I've tried pollinating petunias, pansies, even peonies. The group then gets into a... <laughs> they get in a car and, and drive off to Hollywood. How the hell is a snake driving the car? You know what? No. Why am I asking logical questions? They have no place here in this movie. And this part really creeps me out. They go to a motel to crash for the night. Welcome to the two-star motel. Ah, I gotcha. It's, uh, one of those kinds of movies. Get used to living in luxury, Walt. <laughs> and just try to follow me with this next part. Again, I'm just telling you what happens. All right, here we go. Walt and the snake go into their room, which they steal from an alien. They then watch a TV show where the contestants get spanked by a floating paddle. The TV then attacks them, and then they take off to a gas station, where they then proceed to steal the gasoline. And then they get chased down by a bunch of isopods riding motorcycles with missile launchers on them. Whoa! Uh-oh. Ah! Uh, but don't worry. Our spider friend scares off the bikers by saying, Boo! So the gang arrives at Hollywood. By the way, it's actually called Viperwood, but that's dumb, so I'm not gonna call it that. We then meet the Purple Snake's assistant, who just randomly drops out of the sky. Like, literally. Welcome home, boss! <laughs> After that, Walt gets sent to a bunch of studios trying to land a job. But the snake lied about Walt's resume and said that Walt can do a bunch of stuff, like speak Japanese, or Hold his breath for 20 minutes. So, you can hold your breath underwater for 20 minutes? Wow. What? No, I hate water. <laughs> oh, Walt is practically an aquatic mammal. <laughs> I, I love that. Robert Downey Jr., you can be the next Iron Man if, and only if, you can hold your breath underwater for 20 minutes. And that's how he became Iron Man. So Walt almost dies by drowning to death and fails his audition. But then he goes onto a game show where he answers questions. Walt is appearing on Paddle Wackier. The quiz show where contestants get spanked. Oh, that's hot. That's hot. So this part in particular is especially frustrating because Walt doesn't know the answer for a question. And the spider tells him to stop lying. What color is an octopus? Walt, tell the truth. You don't know. Make something up. Uh, the truth, Walt. Any color, Walt. I don't know. I'm sorry, but not knowing the answer for something isn't lying. Could you imagine that? Hey, you. How many miles away is the Earth from the sun? I don't know. Don't lie to me. Walt fails again, and then, and then lands a roll on some Japanese robot boat thing, where he proceeds to get blown up. Hello, what's going on? Uh -oh. ah! And finally, after going to the hospital, Walt lands a job and becomes a rapper. Just hear his sick beats. Wherever I go, whatever I do, there's one thing I know, I'll always be true to my barnyard roots. I'm from the barnyard. But there's a catch. This isn't actually an audition. He's at a meat factory, and he's about to be turned into sausage links. Which begs the question, did the snake guy plan this out? 
Like, were all the auditions him trying to actually get money through Walt? And then he said, eh, this isn't working out. Let's just eat him. Or was this some intricate way of trying to get him to the meat factory? The world is losing some a nice set of pipes. Yeah, but it's gaining some like great sausage links. Again, once more, with feeling, I do not follow this story. Ah! But Walt's friends come to the rescue, and the bee stings the snake. To which then the villain snake screams for like 10 seconds. And if we have not suffered enough, we then get this stupid lesson out of nowhere about not lying. As if a moral to the story is going to save this movie. Walt, when folks start lying, they often don't know when to stop. Yeah, which is why it's better not to lie at all. But when enough people make false promises, words stop meaning anything. Walt and his friends then go back to the farm, and the movie is over. Ah. Ah. <gasps> all right, so let's go over my five points. Usually, I start off with a story, but uh, <laughs> we'll save that one for last. Instead, let's talk about the voice acting. So yeah, it sucked. Again, I'm under the impression that these voice actors are actually locked up in a prison under Michael's lake house and are being forced to record lines. If that's the case, then they did a fantastic job. Like, real amazing stuff. 10 out of 10. Blink twice if you need rescue. Next, there's the dialogue. Just like the rest of this movie, it doesn't make any sense. At one moment, you have characters talking about living on the farm. And then out of nowhere, they start talking about aliens and ghosts. The dialogue jerks you back and forth and leaves you confused with what the hell is going on. Don't blink, you might miss everything. Yeah, and we'll be here long after you're dead and gone. That's right. Such impudence. After that, there's the editing. Not much to say, really. It was low tier stuff. But there was this one moment that really messed with me. So the snake guy was reaching out to turn off the TV, which I don't even know how he did because he has no arms. But the sound effect that's made when he reaches out to it sounds like some kind of crumpled up soda can. Just turn it off. Ouch. What the hell was that? Then there's the animation. Uh, uh, the pigs look like flesh monsters. That's the best way I can describe it. And it gets even worse when Walt wears a cast in the hospital. A cast that is the same color as his skin. So it looks like his arm has some kind of massive growth on it. I can't see anything. The price of fashion. Everything else is trash. I'm pretty sure that the studio had a bunch of models lying around and said, hey, let's make a movie. And that's why we see random aliens and ghosts and bugs that look like they're from different properties. Heck, the, the, the car that the snake drives is the same character from A Car's Life, except this time he has no eyes or mouth. I have no mouth and I must scream. Characters clip, their movement is slow and clunky, the textures are shit, and the backgrounds are minimal at best, and not in a good way. They strike out in every category, and the visuals have nothing to offer except for laughing at how bad they look. My personal favorite is the snake paddle mutant creature that's probably begging for death. Y you poor miserable thing. And finally, there's the story. <sighs> I, I don't know what to say. Like, I'm pretty sure I could have written a better story over the course of an hour. For the movie to go from a farm, to a motel, to Hollywood, and then a meat factory? Uh, there's just no rhyme or reason. Characters just show up out of nowhere, saying and doing things that make zero sense. Oh no, these people stole $10 worth of gasoline. Better send out my armed motorcycle guards who shoot missiles. 
none of the characters are likable, and they offer nothing of interest. Walt's a gullible idiot. The purple spider is annoying and preachy. The yellow spider doesn't do anything at all. The villain snake has spotty logic. That's constantly confusing me. And then you have this offensive French bee who just randomly shows up and says stuff that's more like commentary than actual character interaction. And I love how at the end of the movie, everybody suddenly cares about the bee. Like, more than Walt or the other characters. Oh no, bee, not you. <gasps> I am alive! But then the bee is just fine. And the movie shoves a moral in our face, thinking it can teach a lesson to the audience. Gotta get on the good side of the Christian viewers, right? You didn't remember that only the pig who ate the pie would know that. <laughs> yeah. But you should tell the truth because it's the right thing to do, not because it's easier than remembering what you said. The way the story progresses is confusing, and it doesn't make any sense. It's more like an unfocused fan fiction, if anything. Like, why did the villain Snake go through all of the trouble of trying to get Walt a job in Hollywood when his endgame was to turn Walt into meat? That doesn't make any sense! And if his idea was to get Walt to the meat factory all along, that doesn't make any sense either! Like, no matter how you play this out, it doesn't make sense. Honestly, guys, I have no idea. This movie sucks. My butt really hurts. All right, so how do we improve the movie? Easy. Don't make it. And I'm being 100% honest. I, I, I truly can't think of a single way of salvaging this film, outside of just not creating it to begin with. The film has no focus, and it was only made to cash in on unsuspecting people who can't tell the difference between movies. It's shameless, it's garbage, and it's one of the worst things I've ever reviewed on my channel. The only silver lining is laughing at how bad it is. So in that regard, I highly recommend it. Go check it out. It did not take long. The homework ate spot quickly. Now I hate ping pong. I always hated homework. Hey guys, thanks again for watching the video. If you want to see more reviews or video essays, make sure you subscribe to the channel. As of right now, I got some big projects planned for August, so it should be a really fun month with some interesting topics I've been working on. Also, big shout out to my patrons for supporting me. If you want to check me out on Patreon, hit the link in the description. Alright, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.